everybody, welcome back. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Brand new, hot off the presses, direct from Guangdong, China, the Anning Q60, for your cheapo pleasure. And a big shout out to Anning. Thanks so much for sending the Q60 in for this review. Boy, this is definitely the year of the smart meter. Anning, how do you keep on churning them out? Amazing. So the Q60 is a 6,000 count true RMS, little smart multimeter. Let me say right up front, this is definitely one of the most unusual style multimeters I have ever seen. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. But let's start off with what do you get in the box? Well, Anning sends you a pretty darn good looking box. Made it here from one uh, Guangdong, China, all in one piece. And uh, hey, that says something. Also, you get one of these very trendy for 2021 little hangers you tie around your multimeter so you can take it with you on the go, on the road, wherever you happen to be, at Tim Hortons or Starbucks or, I don't know, uh, the Gaul Airport. Anyway, long story short, this thing is definitely portable. And you get the user manual. And once again, Anning does actually make it into a little manual. All the specs are here. A few pictures, um, pretty concise, albeit plain Jane information. And uh, anyway, good to have. And of course, you do get this rather sexy little case. Um, yeah, whoops, didn't mean to cover you up. And of course, you get the multimeter. <gasps> It's quite a good looking multimeter. Now, truth be told, the more I'm looking at the red and black, the more I'm saying this is one darn good looking cheapo. Yeah, it just fits the overall look, fit and finish um, to a T. And uh, yeah, it looks really, really good on the bench. Besides the color, I gotta say, this is one compact little device. Um, it's, it's heavy too, surprisingly. I thought this was gonna be some pretty weightless, uh, you know, meter, but it's not, it's, it's heavy. It's bloody heavy so um that's usually a good sign when it comes to electronics we'll soon find out okay so here's where things get a little weird now when you first look at it you go wow you know not not bad not bad but i, I like it i think but then you realize oh my god it freaking opens it opens it's a damn pocket meter it, it's just really a pocket meter um i had no idea that this was going to open like a clamshell and um yeah two for the price of one and the funny thing is now this is really funny we have a screen protector here on the outside and guess what we have another screen protector anning is spending a lot of money on screen protectors in 2021 <laughs> anywho um yeah so this is really um unusual design I'm not sure why um but when you open that clamshell, you see here, we have all of those readings. So we have the voltage, AC, resistance, diode, continuity, all that good stuff. But when you open it, you lose it. Nothing on this one. It is empty. Black hole, yeah, not a pinata. So, <sighs> bizarre. I'm telling you, when it comes to the Q60, things get even weirder. So not only do we have the power button, on the outside of the shell but we have another power button on the inside so we're actually getting two power buttons but it's not really a power button it's a full power button because if you press it from here nothing happens it, it's not making contact so it's just for looks power button they, they've replicated all this to, to, to mimic this but this doesn't actually work because this is the actual one that works it's just uh, uh, gosh but thank god it's smart Okay, so we have concluded this is a slightly quirky multimeter. Um, that being said, it's not always a bad thing. Now, besides this Star Trek-like cover here, um, if we flip it over, you can tell we don't have a tilt stand. No tilt stand going on, at least not your traditional tilt stand. Theoretically, this is gonna be your tilt stand, that extra cover. But as you can see, it doesn't do a really darn good job. I mean, it's, it's okay, but it's just not very secure, so. Yeah, no tilt stand. And as we mentioned, those leads are captive. Uh, pretty well, most clamshell style multimeters have captive leads. Uh, the Q60 is no exception. Now, not necessarily a bad thing, I guess, but I'm not always a fan of these captive leads just because, you know, something happens, then you're kind of gonna have an issue replacing them. 
pretty small as well standard uh, plastic here nothing to get uber excited about um, they're not even that sharp to be quite honest do have a cat rating on them of 600 volts cat 2 so uh, you know captive small yeah okay and finally this does not do current of any sort not even milliamps no current not with the q60 we have the power button over here frequency duty cycle hold also we have the auto mode which is only volts ac dc uh, nothing else not even resistance in the middle we have our capacitance diode continuity and resistance finally on the far right we have our non-contact voltage no other third-party safety designations other than that standard CE, which these days doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. And by the way, that carrying strap, it goes right at the bottom of the meter here. I took a little while to figure this one out. Nothing in the manual, but yeah, that's basically where it goes. Here we go. Let's turn on that true RMS 6000 count display for the first time. And there we go. Look at that nice backlit. Um, oh, and we have a dual temperature coming up. Now it brings you into auto mode by default if you want to get out of auto mode. This is where you have your finite settings. Now you can see that arrow here at the top and that's what I'm talking about. So here it's actually telling you where you are in terms of your uh, selections. But because that display has been flipped over, you don't see it. So here we are in capacitance, I'm sorry, in continuity. And if we flip it over, you see that arrow really just doesn't mean anything at this point because we don't have a scale anymore. Flashlight is enabled the moment you can tell. Not very bright uh, at all, really. Here we are with our precision voltage standard. 5.000 volts is what we want. 5.009 is what we get. Uh, still in spec and um, uh, not, not a bad looking display, actually. We do have this bar graph here on the left. It is in the vertical as opposed to the horizontal, so slightly unusual perspective, but it uh, takes a little getting used to, but nonetheless, it's a bar graph, and that is a good thing. Quick DC voltage showdown here. I've got the Anning 620A teamed up with the Q60. That 620A is a super popular multimeter. If you haven't seen the video I did way back when, check it out. Let me know. Well, sitting at half a volt, 0 0.495, 0 0.496, 0 0.4. 9, 5, according to the Siglin power supply. Here we go. Up and away. We're going to settle on 3.09 volts. Hey, spot on 620. 3.09 and 3.1 for the Q60. Okay, up and away. Let's take it to 12 volts even. Steven, 12 volts even. And here we are, 12.02 for the Q60. 11.99. <laughs> so close for the 620A. And one more, one more, 16 volts, even according to the Seglin power supply. Wow, 620, back on the road again. 16 volts, even, 16.03 for the Q60. Okay, we're gonna max it out now. 32.0, oh no, 31.99 according to the Seglin. And look at that, 620, good old accurate. 31.99 for the 620A from adding and 32.05 for the Q60. So, wow, it was close, but definitely, the 620A took this DC voltage showdown. As well, we do have a temperature discrepancy, 18 degrees Celsius versus 22.6. And if we bring in a second opinion, uh, Sanwa PC7000 is telling us it agrees with the 628, definitely closer to 18 degrees Celsius. Now, if you work in a dirty, messy environment, uh, the nice thing about this clamshell is that look at those leads they can make it through the enclosure without any problems so you're good to go and you have that extra protection awesome already we're still in auto mode here we go let's try 120 volts ac true rms and yeah look at that 120.3.4 and nice thing about this as well with that dual display we have our frequency at the bottom about 60 hertz awesome now if we wanted more details hit that frequency button and we're going to get a dual display once again, showing not only the frequency, but also the duty cycle. Hey, 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 it's continuity time. One of my favorite times of the review. I just have this thing about continuity. Don't ask me why. Even my psychologist doesn't quite get it. Stock default probes, because yes, they are captive, and it's the only probes we're going to be using. 
three, two, one. You have to definitely put a lot of pressure on the leads to get them to latch. Hit and miss though, hit and miss. It's fairly loud though. Fairly loud is an understatement. 81.5 decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Woo, that is loud. Okay, we are going to go into diode mode. And I was just there, there we are. Five hungry LEDs. Here we go, starting off with the red. It is lit with a forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Same, 1.8 volts over to the green. 2.3 volts forward voltage drop. Hey, three for three so far. The blue, it is lit with a forward voltage drop. And the white, yes, indeed. Five for five. Hey, that's a booyah. Awesome. All right, let's just check a standard diode. And no issues there. Fortunately, we don't have that nice audible beep as well. But yeah, no worries. Almost a whopping four volts output voltage in diode mode. Awesome. Capacitance is next. As you can see, according to the scale, we have 60 millifarad maximum capacity in capacitance mode. Not too shabby. Already I've got a honking 47 millifarad cap here. 47,000 microfarad. How quick is it going to range? It's looking. It's thinking. 54, 52. Ew, it's still in microfarad mode. Now it's in millifarad mode. Wow, it is taking a long time. There we are, 42 millifarad. A little bit longer than I was expecting, but uh, it did get there eventually. I did try that 100 millifarad cap. Unfortunately, no can do. What about the lower capacitance ranges, you say? Well, I'm glad you asked. One microfarad coming up is 0.876. Let's try three microfarad, 2.586. Five microfarad coming up as four. 8 microfarad coming in as 6.3, so a little off in the low capacitance range. 9 microfarad is 7.2. Finally, we're going to look at resistance sitting here with the resistance box. Uh, 1 mega ohm right now coming up as 0.998. Pretty darn good. Here we go. 3 mega ohm. Oh, that's nice and fast range. 6 mega ohm coming up as 5.95. 5. Five. 6.01 so it took a little while but it's definitely accurate let's try 10 mega ohm oh yeah beauty so faster range and pretty accurate let's try 100 1.1 k 1.11 k let's try 111 k yeah nice so uh hey gotta say impressed impressed usually smart model multimeters per se are not the greatest when it comes to range speed it takes them a while but in this case the q60 really good now some multimeters have a hard time in the lower resistance ranges. Heck, some can't even measure below 5 ohm. But here's a 0.5 ohm. Let's just see if it's going to have any issues with that. And it's coming up as 0.3 of an ohm. Do we have any resistance on those leads? Always good to check. And look at that. No, nothing. Nothing at all. No rel feature on this meter, but really not needed because no resistance. So 0.5 of an ohm. Coming up is 0.3, but at least it is getting down there in that range. Finally, looking at a lab resistor, 100 ohm, pretty darn close, 99.8. Hey, this meter is pretty good at resistance. Already, we're now in NCV mode, non-contact voltage. And you can tell we have the EF at the top of the display. Here we go, 120 volts. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's not that sensitive. Yeah, so uh, probably wouldn't want to trust your life with this one. At least we do have some indicator, but just not sensitive enough. <sighs> and if we try it on a standard light switch. Yeah, so it, at least it tells us we have voltage, but it's just not, not, not that great. Well, I've got to say, I was 
kind of impressed with this meter overall. For the majority of the review, I just kept it closed, didn't bother with the clamshell at all. It was lying flat on the bench, and I just seem to prefer it that way. Um, feels good in the hands, once again, it has a nice rubbery, tactile grip here, um, but all in all, I'm kind of impressed. Alrighty, it's teardown time. Taking a look at the inside of the Q60. Well, as you can see, uh, no shielding, uh, no surprises, but yeah, that's what you get. Now there's no current support on this meter, so really no reason to ever want to get in this deep. Um, it was a bit of a pain to open up, and unless your name is Stefan, you probably don't know what I'm talking about yet. At the top here, we have one lonely PTC doing input protection. Here is a relay. And the main IC is Cobb, and there's our buzzer over at the top, an oscillator, uh, diode clamp, but really slim pickings here in terms of the overall uh, use of the PCB. We have a fab date here of 2020, uh, 0312, so March 12th, 2020. Looks like a version 7. And at the top right, we have our whole tech. This is the 1621B, that is our LCD controller, giving us all that nice, gorgeous EBTN display. Looking good. Finally, at the top, we have our LED for the flashlight, but that is pretty well it. Let's take a look on the other side. Finally, on the other side, there are those soft touch buttons. And of course, we have our big, gorgeous display over here. Here is the Elastomar Zebra Strip. And yeah, that is about it. That's all. All in all, pretty compact. Obviously, nothing robust. No major input protection going on here. Are we going to put things back together? Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Anning Q60. I like this multimeter. It is definitely a little quirky. It takes a little getting used to it first, but once you get over that, um, I'm telling you, it's not a bad meter. Good set of ranges, quick to range, nice display, and even the case itself, yes, quirky, but it works. Doesn't do current, not even milliamps. That is a huge downer. But what it does do, it does really well. I hadn't had any bugs, no issues whatsoever. Just good, solid, stable multimeter. Definitely not the cheapest cheapo out there. Around 30 bucks Canadian, about 25 or so US dollars. But that being said, I do think in this case, it is worth it. The Anning Q60, smart multimeter in a clamshell, gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. This was a really cool one. And talking about cool multimeters, I got a whole bunch of stuff coming in December. Can hardly wait. Till the next one, keep on testing.